Manodia. Okay. Okay, students, so you can see the document. Can I? Eh? Yes. Okay, thanks. Okay, so we we did some questions about this, about uh, so we done induction. So what do you learn under induction? You learn about magnetic flux. Uh, what is magnetic flux? Is the product of magnetic field strength and the uh, surface area. Okay. Uh, then we talk about um, Faraday's law, Lenz's law governing the development of generator. Uh, after that, we talked about how the current versus T graph can be converted to uh, EMF versus time graph. Okay. Then finally, we talk about eddy current. Okay. The to topic is short but uh, tricky. Eh? Okay, so let's we do some questions here. Eh? Uh, this file is uh, induction with AC. So some question will be together with AC. So we're going to speak, skip E and Dela. Eh? Okay, so we skip this. This is uh, AC. Okay, we can do this. November 2, question 7. So let's we give a try on question. So metal wires hang between the magnet. So they're asking, uh, so the wire oscillating, and it's oscillating across the magnet. Of course, EMF will be generated. The EMF generator graph was shown like this. Okay, that's the EM graph. Uh, the CRO was uh, sensitivity is one millivolt per centimeter for the uh, Y plate, and time base was 0 0.5 millisecond per centimeter. Okay. Now the question is, making reference to the law of electromagnetic induction, suggest why EMF is induced in the wire, four marks, two marks, two marks, and why the EMF is alternating. Okay, the first question, why the EMF is induced in the wire? Wait, um, so, can you see the yeah. diagram? Yeah. The, um, the diagram. The diagram, yeah. This diagram, eh? so this is your wire, wire with the magnet. Is, is it plugged? Yeah, it was plugged. Okay, the wire was plugged and uh, generate EMF. Okay, why there is a EMF induced in this wire? Two mark uh, to the law. So which law you see? According to what law? According yeah. to Faraday's, Faraday's. According, to Faraday, according to Faraday's law, the wire cuts the magnetic field line. Therefore, the wire experience changes in what? The wire experience changes in magnetic flux. Magnetic flux. Therefore, according to Faraday's law, uh, EMF is directly proportional to rate of changes of magnetic flux. Therefore, EMF is induced in the wire. Okay. So wire cuts the magnetic field line, wire experience flux change, magnetic flux change. According to Faraday's law, uh, EMF induced is directly proportional to the rate of changes of magnetic flux. Therefore, EMF is induced, the wire. That's the uh, two magla, huh? they want the law. Why the EMF is alternating? Why the EMF is uh, alternating? So what law? Yeah. Um, moves up, up and down. Yeah. The question is, according to which law? Oh, the direction okay. of the, the direction of the cutting of the field line changes. Therefore, according to the lenses lenses law, the EMF induced direction will change to oppose the uh, movement uh, to oppose the change which produces it. Okay. So what you see? Uh, the keyword is. 
the direction of the cutting of the magnetic field line changes. Okay, one mark. Uh, according to Lenz's law, uh, direction of EMF will change to oppose the change which produces it. Okay, so that should be your Lenz's law. Uh, Lenz's law. Okay, next. CR of setting on determined equation representing the induced alternating current. Oh. Determine the equation representing the induced alternating EMF. Comma. The graph is sine or cos? Or oh, oh. like this. I think uh, because we don't know where, where is the ending, you can use sine or cos both accepted. Both accepted. Okay. It's like your SHM, right? Equation. Anyone can suggest one? Let's say we go for sine. So the V is going to be what? The common formula is what? V naught sine omega t, correct? Alternating also, you have the same formula one. So V naught is how much? V naught, you have to check from the big to the bottom, check how many boxes, check how many boxes here. Okay. Then the boxes, I don't know, not very clear. How many boxes? It's like, it's like uh, one, one, two C, about two CM. Huh? Two CM. Is it two CM? Maybe five boxes. Three, three or 2.5. Like that. 3 five. five boxes is one CM. Huh? So, yeah, so here yeah, three. Here's six, here nine, ten, thirteen, about fifteen, about three cm. Eh? Okay, so three cm, what is the peak voltage? So one millivolt for one centimeter, so three cm is Zero. three millivolt sine Zero. omega. Omega, how do you find omega? Because oh. time base is given. So what is the period you can find, right? Period, get the period from here to here, get the period. And what do you do? Two, um, two pi over T, you get your omega. Yeah. So put that value here, T. That should be your equation. Okay. So this idea must come up. Eh? Period, get the period, get the omega. Uh, pick to pick. Divide by two, you get the. Oh, sorry, I made a mistake. Uh, what is your V naught? V naught is not three, right? Peak to peak is three centimeter. So V naught should be half of it, right? Yes. One point five. Eh? Okay. Yeah. So this should be the equation here. Okay. What year is this? It's your November two. Eh? So down. Okay, so yeah, this is the four marks for that. Eh? Uh, X naught is 1.5, omega is 2 pi over t, you get one mark, and calculation is one mark. Final equation is like only one mark. Okay, sine 2090 t. Okay. Okay, so that's the question about this. Okay, move forward. This is your AC. Uh, we skip this. It's all our AC. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, this one. Okay, first, define Tesla. Uh, this is your electromagnetic electromagnetism earlier, magnetic field. Uh -huh. So, what is Tesla? So, F equals to B I L, so I think you can use B equals to F over I L. Eh? What is meant by Tesla? The field strength said to be one Tesla when one Newton of force, one Newton of force experienced by a one meter length of conductor place carries a one MP of current flow placed perpendicular to the field. Is considered as one Tesla. 
Okay. So just put numbers, lah. All one. One Tesla is the magnetic field said to be one Tesla when one Newton of force experienced by a one ampere current flow of conductor of length of one ampere, a one one meter, uh, placed perpendicular to the magnetic field. Okay. The next, a frame was given 6085. They're asking for calculate the magnetic flux through windows. How do you find magnetic flux? Magnetic flux is B dot A cos theta, but here yeah, 90 degrees. Okay, 90 degrees. So just B dot A. Huh? B we know is 1.8 times 10 to the power 94. A is 60 times 85. Change to meter. You get your answer. The final answer will be what you need? Weber. Okay. Think straightforward. Okay, next now. The windows now is open in a time of 0 0.2 seconds. When open, the plane of the window is parallel to the earth magnetic field. For the opening of the window. State the change in flux through the window. They open the window 0 0.2 seconds. Means what? This window was open like this. Finally, was like this. Okay. So that the magnetic field is like parallel to the window surface. Okay. 90 degrees now they open. Eh? Asking what is the change in flux? So whatever flux you got here, final flux is how much? Anyone? And the door is open 90 degrees. Final flux how much? Is, is there any area? No area, right? When you open 90 no. degrees. So final flux become zero. Right? Final flux becomes zero. Because when you see there, the, the window is like no area. New view from here, huh? no area. So the answer here should be the answer, the paper you got here. Let's say paper you got five paper. Let's say. So here the change is also five paper. Five becomes zero. So our changes is five. Okay. Okay, the EMF. So what do you put? EMF equals to changes of flux over changes of time. Okay. This is the flux, whatever I'm saying, you got here five divided by time. Time taken is 0 0.2. So you get EMF in volt. Okay. Okay, next, suggest with reason whether the EMF calculated in two rise to a current in the frame A, B, C, D or not. What do you think the answer for this? Do you think we'll get a current or not in the frame? I go up, eh? The frame here open for 90 degrees. You definitely will have EMF. Is that EMF will lead to current flow or not? In A, B, C, D. Anybody? These are here. These are what do you think? These are. Is there will current flow? These are, these are not here. Uh, okay. Shike, what do you think? Is there will be a current flow? Yes. Why? Because the there's a change in magnetic flux. A change in magnetic flux will cause EMF induced. Okay. Then, 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 will, yeah. then, the, then EMF will cause in will cause the current to flow, right? Okay. Is it always EMF will cause the current to flow? Yes. If current to flow, eh, there is one condition. What's the condition? Let's say let's say you take uh, one bar, just one bar, eh, one bar. Eh. You just go and cut the magnetic field line like this. If the bar will get EMF, yes. If the bar will get current. If the bar will get current. The bar will get EMF. Because changing magnetic flux. Do the car will get the, the bar will get current or not? 
It won't get current. No. Why it can't get current? It's not a complete circuit. Yes, that's the answer. Why A B C D current flows? Because it's a closed loop. Uh, because it's a closed loop, current will flow. Okay. Okay, now I ask you extra question. Eh? When this CD, it was inched at AB, eh? it was inched at AB, the CD was moving from here to the other side, 90 degrees, right? Okay, so closing line. Eh? Can you tell me, the current will flow in this loop clockwise or anti-clockwise? One minute for you. Current will flow clockwise or anti-clockwise? With the reason, eh? One minute for you. Relative to what? Like direction. The current when 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 you when you when you move the C D when you open the window, it's yes. like this which here, right? C D, yeah. Yes. The current will flow in this in this windows A B C D or A D C B. Oh, which okay. direction? And why? When open. Ah when when open, like like just now open to the left. Eh? Flux dropping or rising? Flux is decreasing or increasing? Increasing. Uh, the a certain flux become zero, right? Uh -oh, flux okay. is dropping, right? Uh, yeah. So current should flow in such a way to rise the flux or decrease the flux? Rise. Rise the flux. So the current will flow such a way that to enhance the original magnetic field or oppose the original magnetic field? Enhance. Enhance. So the current should flow which way? A, B, C, D or A, D, C, B? A, D, C, B. A, A, B, C, B. A, B, C, D, right? Clockwise, right? Why? Use one rule. Oh. So right hand grip rule. Okay. Use your right hand grip rule. Okay, use your uh, thumb, point inside. Your finger tells you which direction. Okay, oh, when you view okay. it from here, see the current flow clockwise okay so question now current will flow in clockwise why because the flux is decreasing the changes is the flux is decreasing according to Lenz's law the current will flow in such that to oppose the change so the current will flow clockwise uh, to oppose the change to try to rise the flux okay. what type of change happens here flux is dropping so you need to oppose the change you rise the flux Okay, by creating a field, same direction as the original field. Okay. Uh, this one question. Eh? Just think in the is any current, is it? Yes. Uh, in this case, we can't see it eddy current because uh, the current will flow in a clockwise direction. Eddy current means like a completely one full conductor. Like, um, like the center also like, like conductor. Full conductor, yes, then it could be eddy current. Okay. Okay. Like just like a frame, side frame only, you get a current, a flow of current. Okay. okay this is uh, AC. Uh, we skip this. This all are AC. Okay. This is another question. Uh, this is transformer AC. Okay, guys, uh, you can give a try the other questions. Eh? You try the other questions. Uh, we will come back to this paper document again after we use after we're done with AC. Okay, then we do together with AC and EM induction. Okay, so now let's go to the topic. Okay, so next topic we will discuss is alternating current. Okay, alternating current. Uh, we done direct current, you know, eight AS. Now A2 we learn alternating current. Okay, uh, I, this subtopic all is familiar for you, right? You learned this before, right? You learned about alternating current, transformer, all same. Eh? Just a little in depth, but nothing new for you. Okay, so this is what we're going to discuss. Okay, first thing, 
uh, introduced two scientists who really worked hard for in current field. They both you heard of both of them, uh, Thomas Edison and Nikola Tesla. Okay, they have a strong link between them. Okay, but they it's called current war. Eh? Uh, what is meant by current war? One promote DC, one, one promote one. AC. Yeah, eh? who promote DC? Edison. Eh? Edison promote DC. Edison said uh, for entire world. The current electricity could be transmitted by using direct current, but uh, Nikola Tesla said uh, AC better than DC in terms of transmitting electricity for a uh, for a city or something. But who's the winner? Finally, who's the winner? He said right there, Tesla. Tesla, uh, AC. AC was preferred than DC. Why? Anyone? Why? It could generate power, cons, cons, um, like generator. You you know this indirectly already. Why AC better than DC? Two it reasons why AC better than DC. AC can turn into DC, but DC yes. can to AC. Oh, okay. Very good. AC can convert to DC, but DC can't convert to AC. Okay. Actually, that's a secondary reason. Okay, but it, that's also one of the reasons. But main reason is what? Anyone? Trans transformer. Yes, transformer. Eh? All because of transformer. Okay. Because its voltage can be easily step up and step down. AC voltage can be step up and step down. That's the most dominant main reason. Eh? Because alternating current, alternating voltage can be step up, step down. High voltage power is transmitted, it reduces loss due to heating of the transmitting cable. Okay, now the key, the question is, you learn this in your form five, right? Or your O levels, and from the what? From the power plant to power plant, you want to send to your house. You must step up, right? Yeah. Step up the voltage and come to yeah. the houses. You step down line accordingly, eh? and you charge your phone. Step down further. Eh? Few transformers in there. Why well, you need to step down the voltage? Uh, you know the reason, right? You need to know the reason. This is the reason, right? Why you need to accept the voltage? All because of power loss. Eh? The heat loss in the cable is the main factor causes the efficiency of the transmission reduces. The power loss, we know I squared R in the cable. So how do you reduce the I squared R? Uh, reduce the R and you reduce the I. Eh? R, we can't reduce a lot because R you want to reduce, use a good conductor. Uh, the best conductor we use what? Copper. Eh? Copper we use. So, so R we done our job. Use a uh, copper, good conductor. But another one thing, I need to be reduced. So the circuit current need to be reduced. So how do you reduce the circuit current? The power, the power plant. Eh? Okay, here the power plant has a certain power. Eh? It has its own power. The power equals to IV. Okay. So we want to get a big current in the circuit. Okay. So what do we do? The voltage of the what do you call the the power of the power plant, and we use a transformer. Transformer coming out also the power should be same. So so the power of the in the cable the power is constant lah. Power constant for the power plant. So the voltage we rise in the cable so that the current is reduced a lot. So we use a high voltage transmission. Eh? It's for the sake of uh, reducing the current. So that power loss is dropped. Then we rise the voltage again, uh, decrease the voltage again line household. Okay, so why we are recalling this back? To tell the advantage of AC compared to DC. What is the advantage? AC voltage can be step up or step down by using a transformer. So these all types of transformer I eh, got small scale to the big scale. Okay. So now we have to go in depth about transformer. Why transformer favoring AC? This story we already talked about the early topic, right? Transformer only works based on AC. Why? You know the story, right? And the current flow in the primary coil, the AC produces what? 
changing magnetic field in the ion core. The changing magnetic field in the ion core causes changes of magnetic flux in the secondary coil. So according to Faraday's law, uh, EMF is induced in the secondary coil. Okay, therefore, AC uses. If you use DC, there won't be any changes to the magnetic field in the core. Therefore, no change in flux happens in the secondary coil. So no EMF induced. Okay, but I tell you reality. I tell you lah. If you connect DC, yeah, when you on the switch, yeah, at the small milliseconds at the beginning, yeah, you'll get voltage. You will get voltage at the beginning only, because zero current suddenly got current flux suddenly field suddenly becomes stronger. Uh, there is a flux change in the wire. You get voltage just the beginning. After that, uh, no voltage anymore. DC. Yeah. Hey, I hope you understand this graph. The input voltage is sine, output voltage is cos. What is the phase difference? 90 degrees. We also calculate this, right? Last topic. Why the phase, phase difference rises? Because of what? EMF is what? It's negative of the rate of changes of magnetic flux. We differentiate and input negative. The sine graph tend to be cos graph. So there is a phase difference. The input voltage and the output voltage as a phase difference of how much? 90 degrees. Okay, 90 degrees. All because of Faraday's law. EMF is rate of changes of magnetic flux. Okay. So this is the symbol of transformer. Okay. Uh, we go in depth about transformer now. Eh? Transformer, you know this formula, right? Eh? Vs over Vp equals to Ns over Np, right? Yes, so VP equals to NS over NP. Uh, remember this formula, recall back. So if the transformer is ideal, then IS over IP also can be included. Uh, VP over VS equals to NP over NS, but equals to IS over IP. The other way around. Uh, how do you get IS over IP? Input power equals to output power. Or IP VP must be equals to IS VS, so you get the formula. Eh? VP over VS is IS over IP. Eh? Correct. So for a transformer, VP, VS, IP, IS, number of turns, la, NP, NS. So remember this formula. Mainly VP, VS, NP, NS. La. That's important. Yeah. Okay, the transformer, the characteristics of ideal transformer. What is meant by ideal transformer? A zero resistance of primary and secondary coil, no flux leakage, no flux has been not linked to the secondary coil. Okay. Uh, important is 100% efficient. Yeah. Input power is equal to output power. The syllabus, all are ideal transformer. But in reality, no such thing as ideal transformer. Okay, some power definitely lost. Okay, transformer loses energy in four ways. Anyone still remember your early studies? How transformer loses energy? Four ways. Eddy, eddy current. Eddy current. Um, loses energy. Do you remember? Distance. Like there is this, yeah. Anything else? Can you remember? Eh? Okay, let's you go one by one. First is the flux linkage, uh, flux leakage, like we call it. Eh? Leakage or uh, leakage? It's a leakage, but later leakage also there. Okay, uh, this is your word file. These are the questions. Okay, these are the four ways of using energy. Okay, okay yeah, four ways of transformer loses energy. Uh, 
Uh, definitely resistance of the winding. We use lots of wires. So the wire got resistance, although it's a copper wire, good conductor, but still heat generated. Second, flux leakage. Flux leakage. Uh, you have the transformer. You have the coil here. Some magnetic field line doesn't overlap with the secondary. Some some field line here doesn't overlap with the secondary coil. So this this field line doesn't change to voltage. So some some we call it flux leakage. Eh? The flux produced by the primary coil may not be all linked to the secondary coil. If the design of the coil is bad, yeah. So how they overcome this? How they minimize this? They wind the secondary coil on top of the primary coil. Inside you'll have a primary coil. Secondary coil will be on top of it to cover all the all the flux. Okay. So first, how do you minimize resistance of the winding? How do you minimize it? Next time they ask, how do you how do you overcome it? First, resistance of winding. How do you minimize it? By using a a good conductor, use a copper wire. Uh, use a copper wire, which is a good conductor, to minimize it. How do you minimize the flux leakage? Wind the secondary coil on top of the primary coil, like setup given here, uh, uh, which is the setup just now. Yeah, this this picture. This one, eh? uh, the primary coil, the primary coil will be inside. Secondary coil will be outer layer, the outer layer. Okay. So not like shown in this diagram now. Primary here, secondary here. Primary will be at the center. Secondary will be on top. Okay. That, that yeah. Depends on design. Yeah, depends on design actually. So that means that in, the inside coil is one direction, the other one is um, 90 degrees direction. So the inside, the, the wire, the flux, because B dot A, right? Eh? Yeah. The entire area of the primary has been covered up by the secondary coil. So all flux will be linked to the secondary coil. Okay. Okay, third. I already told you many times, eddy current, just recently introduced in induction, eddy current will be generated. So how to minimize it? Use a laminated core. Laminated core is used, okay? Layer by layer, attached to makes a thick one. So, so that the electron makes a small whirling circle, so eddy current can be reduced. Uh, the fourth is hysteresis. The magnetization and demagnetization process loses some energy. Uh, how to minimize it? Use a material which a very good electromagnet. So we use a soft iron. Okay, a core made of a soft iron. A very good electromagnet. Uh, the amount of energy required for magnetize and demagnetization is very minimal. So we minimize the energy loss. So four ways. Eh? You have to remember. Okay. Any questions from here? No questions. Okay, as I said, flux linkage is flux linkage. Eh? So that means some flux will be leaked, leakage. Some flux here doesn't link to the secondary coil. So this causes uh, loose efficiency. Eh? So sometimes we use laminated core, eh? laminate layer by layer, one, one slide to another slide combined to form a thick uh, block. Uh, this to minimize eddy current, energy loss due to eddy current. Okay. Okay, so this is the first part. Okay. AC generator we skip, eh? we done that. Okay. So that's the first part of the topic. Why AC better than DC? AC better than DC because 
AC cannot become DC, but DC cannot become AC. Yeah, but uh, that point you put it as a secondary answer. Eh? The main answer is what? Uh, the voltage can be altered by using a transformer. That's the best answer. Okay. In one pass here, eh, they ask one question. If one advantage, one disadvantage of AC compared to DC. Advantage, you know, what is the disadvantage of AC compared to DC? Anyone? Um, Anyone can you figure out one? Why AC uh, AC has a one disadvantage compared to DC? Hmm. Anyone? Negative voltage. Negative voltage. Negative voltage. Uh, negative voltage. Not really. The diodes. No. No. Diodes. Yeah. The answer given is uh, they say the AC voltage. AC AC circuit is more complex than DC. But that's the disadvantage. Okay, AC circuit uh, looks more complex than DC. Okay, uh, if you go to the your 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 flat screen, your TV at the back. Okay, you open up, you see two boards. One board is the processor. Maybe another board, only one board. Eh? Another one board. Eh? Just for AC circuit, you know. Just for the AC circuit. So the circuit is complex. Okay. So we know AC change to DC. Eh? Uh, TV uses DC. So AC change to DC. Eh? Uh, you need to you need what what device? You need a diode, right? You need diode. But in reality, not only diode required. You need capacitor. The circuit is complex actually. Eh? Okay. If your TV is spoiled, you can open up at the back. You can see the AC circuit at the back. It's quite complex, big board, big board at the back. Okay, so that one disadvantage. Okay, circuit is more complex. Okay. Now look at this slide. These are the four different type of AC current, AC voltage. Sinusoidal. It's called square wave. This is random. This is sawtooth. Uh, this this all are type of AC. The one in your syllabus called sinusoidal. Okay, sinusoidal in your syllabus. Sometimes they do ask about square wave and everything. We will get back to this. Eh? But main one is the square wave. Uh, sorry, uh, sinusoidal. Okay. So DC current current flows in one way. AC the current flows back and forth. Okay, you change direction every half cycle, right? Unlike DC circuit, the electron do not move around the entire circuit, but simply move back and forth along the wire. So AC has its own period, frequency, and angular frequency, like your wave, eh? because it's alternating. You need to have the frequency, uh, period, frequency, and amplitude too. Eh? Okay, what is the frequency given by TNB to us? You are getting AC's power supply, right? The AC you are receiving from TNB, how many frequency? Anyone? It's about 50 hertz. Okay, 50 hertz frequency. Okay. So, because it's alternating, we need to get a formula for it. The formula is same, same as oscillation. Eh? Let's go for voltage. La, voltage. Uh, v equals to V naught sine omega t. Uh, it has a peak value. The graph could be sine of course, but normally sine omega t, angular frequency. Okay. So V equals to V naught sine omega t. If V changes sinusoidally, I also going to change sinusoidally. Right? When V maximum, I also maximum, but correct? Big voltage gives you big current. And voltage drop, current drops. Right? So the both going to uh, change in phase, same phase, sign sign. V is cos, I also going to be cos. Okay. The so omega can be written as two pi alpha, uh, two pi alpha. Yeah. Okay. So AC voltage, this is called peak voltage. 
I not be not. Uh, this from crash to trough, this call, pick to pick. Do I not, do we not? Uh, pick to pick. Normally we find pick to pick divided by two, we got a I not, we not. Okay. Okay. So now, uh, the effective values for AC, AC. You see, yeah. Uh, when you buy a battery, okay. When you buy a battery, okay. For example, go to the. You give when when a new when a manufacturer build a dry cell, they straight away put here one point five volt. They can label one point five volt. If they put one point five volt, what do you understand? You say theoretically the voltage will be constant with one point five volt. That's why they written there. Okay, but now if they come out with the AC power source, AC is the AC power source. AC the voltage varies. Voltage varies with time. So they want to know what value of the V need to be placed comparing to the the DC power supply. Let's say DC power supply, you you put a resistance of one ohm here. How much power will be dissipated here? V squared over R. So it's 1.5 squared over 1.5. Uh, 1.5 squared, how much again? 2.25 watts will be dissipated, right? So it's a heating effect. Huh? You, you put uh, this resistor to, to heat the water. This is the power come out. So we know 1.5 volt of power supply can give you this much of power, okay? Now we want to replace the DC with the AC power supply. Uh, what voltage need to give here? Do you write here? Is it the peak voltage? The peak voltage 1.5 volt. You put peak voltage as 1.5 volt. Is it peak voltage? Can give the same power dissipation as the 1.5 volt of direct. Is this these two equal? Which value can be equal to the the direct cell value? It's not peak, right? It should be what? RMS value. Root mean square value of the voltage, of the AC voltage, it looks like equivalent to the DC value, which dissipate the same rate of energy dissipation across a fixed resistor. Uh, so the value they found that equivalent to the DC power source is RMS value of the AC supply. Why RMS value? Absolutely. That's what has been derived in this slide. Okay, you go. This, you see this slide. This slide shows the proof. Okay, you, you see. You see the. You see, they have a DC power supply with the resistance R. They want to come up power P. Yeah, AC. You apply with the same resistance you want to come out with the same power so power here is i squared r i is the dc current line eh? here average power average law because power is changing up and down because volt current change eh? is the average current r so we want to compare which i or which v in this case they show i eh? which i equal to the direct current i give out the same power. So what they did, they equate both power, PDC equals to PAC, average la. Eh? So I squared DCR equals to average square of R. So they found IDC equals to root mean square value of the AC. Root mean Square value of AC is found to be equal to the direct current. Hmm. This call what? This is the RMS value. This is the RMS value of the AC. So in exam they ask what is meant by RMS value? What is meant by RMS value? So steady current. This this the definition of RMS value, the island one. 
we define the root mean square value, the root mean square current as the steady current that would convert electrical energy to other form of energy in a given resistance at the same rate as the alternating current. Okay, what is root mean square value? A value that equivalent to the direct current value. Okay, okay as I said earlier. Okay, what is root mean square value? A value that equivalent to the direct current value, which dissipate the same uh, rate of energy, uh, rate of power, uh, rate of energy across what? Across a fixed resistance. Uh, that's the definition of RMS value. What is RMS value? A value of AC that equivalent to the direct current value, which dissipate the same rate of energy across the fixed resistance. That is RMS value. Okay. So, you know, uh, that day you go to the lab, you have a power supply, a box, right? Power supply got two ter terminal, what? one right, one left, one right. The left one is they put as DC, right one is AC. We, norm uh, we normally connect to DC. We put the wire TC, we connect all the uh, light bulb and everything. We do the experimental. Eh? Uh, AC we never use, okay? If you want, you can use AC also, okay? So if AC, you got a lot of voltage, you put four volt here, you put in AC, that means this four volt is actually what? Four volt is the, the RMS value of that AC. It's RMS value, it's root mean square value. Okay? So we go back, it's RMS value. All the value for AC is the RMS value either voltage or current. Okay, any questions so far? Okay. Uh, now they found that for sinusoidal, the RMS value, V RMS is equal to V naught over root two. I RMS is finding me I naught over root two. Just for Sinusoidal alternating current. This is the formula. You learned this in your early studies, right? SPM or O levels. Do you study this? I RMS is I naught over root two. V RMS is V naught over root two. Yes. Yes. Just know that, but not the reason. Yeah. Okay. So the derivation you don't need no lah. Huh? Uh, you need to re recall back this formula, I RMS and V RMS. I not over root two, V not over root two, only applicable for uh, sine wave. Okay. So now, let me teach you. Okay, <laughs> time's up. Not much of time. Okay, uh, later I'll teach you, maybe next class I'll teach you. Uh, next class I'll teach you. You can go back the seniors, uh, you know, in your times, the seniors alternating current, uh, the online videos. Uh, in exam, they do ask like square wave like this. They ask you to get what is the RMS value for this. Okay. So for this, we can't use the formula I naught over root two. We can't use this. Okay. We need to derive one formula for RMS for this. Okay. So next class, maybe I can teach you. Uh, you can check the video. So I, I taught you how to do this. How to find the RMS formula for a different shape of alternating current. Okay. So yeah, uh, that's the introduction for today. Uh, so I go back. So what you learned today? You learn about uh sorry so you learn about the transformer you learn about transformer you learn about how transmission of electrical energy has been applied 
we learn little about alternating current characteristic. We are halfway of alternative of current characteristic now. Okay. Uh, rectification is the last part. We will do that later. So we done half of that. Uh, maybe tomorrow we cover this. Okay. Okay. So we done this. Uh, this is the derivation. You can go and check how they got this, 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 these two formulas, but they won't ask the derivation. Eh? Okay. Any questions, guys? No questions, eh? So next class we'll be continuing with this topic. Eh? On Friday, uh, coming Friday, we'll be discussing practical again. Eh? I'll be discussing practical. I'll tell you which practical. Okay. Uh, so on Friday we'll be doing practical back. We do analyze analyzing different type of question involving lock and law. Okay. Okay. So stop here.